I couldn't have imagined this. I couldn't have, in my biggest dreams, would have believed that I have would have been, you know, considered one of the best players, you know, for Philadelphia or Philadelphia athlete. Period. I, I couldn't have even dreamt that. You know, my my dreams weren't, weren't even big enough to 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 uh to you know to to have seen that. So. For people to be saying those things, it's a humbling thing. It's a blessed thing. I realize and recognize that it's, you know, I had a hand in it, absolutely, but the Lord had blessed me. My teammates believed in me. My coaches believed in me. It's a lot of things had to happen for me to to achieve this this uh, great honor. What was it like playing for Andy Reid, Brian? What was what was that experience like? Oh man, Andy's Andy's a great guy. He's a great coach. Um, you know, media and everybody else don't really got to get a chance to see his personality and how, how he's really off the field. Um, funny guy, um, you know, will shoot you straight at what you need to hear in the media. He's not a, not a you know, big speech giver, doesn't do those things. He really leaned on, um, you know, allows the leaders on the team to lead. And, you know, he, you know, empowered us to do those things. And that's something that, uh, I think that we were we were a better team because of it. Now, also to go kind of go along with that, what was it like playing for Jim Johnson? I love playing for Jim, the mad scientist. I love playing playing for Jim. Uh, you know, he's uh, as far as cooking up blitzes and different blitzes and different ways to attack schemes, blocking schemes. I I, I played with nobody better. Um, as far as breaking down blocking protections. If you have a blocking protection, he's going to have blitzes that we've done and we have not done to attack those things. And, you know, if those things are working 100%, they can get ugly real quick. And <laughs> he was one that, you know, he was one that I believe believed in the model of I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down blitzing. And, you know, that's as a defender, you love that. You love that opportunity to, uh, you know, to get after the offense. But how did how did your style of play fit into his defensive schemes? Well, to be honest with you, if it was not for Jim using me the way that he used me, I don't I don't know if I'd have had the career that I had because he used me in completely different ways, in different different ways than than um, than than, um, than Emmett did. Emmett used me as more of a cover guy. When Jim got there, he allowed me to just go crazy doing stuff. You know, he blitzed me more. He put me in the box more. He moved me around. And so as to basically make me one of the focal points of the defense. And to be a safety and to be a focal point of a defense, that's unheard of. But that's the way he began to use me. I mean, in the beginning it was, you know, just the vanilla stuff, what pretty much everybody does. And then as he saw, you know, my God-given ability, he began to call, dial my number up time and time and time again. So I'll, I'll, I've always said and will continue to say that the reason why I made so many crunch plays in the fourth quarter, big, you know, sacks or big hits or, you know, those those type of things is because Jim called my number every time in crunch time because he believed in me. He believed that I would do anything and I would, you know, give a limb if I had to to, to make his blitzes uh, to come home. Now, do you have a do you have a play that stands out in your mind there, Brian? A play that you've made that you just replay over and over, and it will probably be the play against uh, um, it was Pittsburgh in '08 when I, my last year there. Um, you know, it was fourth quarter; they were driving, and we needed to stop defensively or fourth down. It was going for it, and uh, them that. Jim did what he does. He did what he did, and called an all-out blitz. And um, you know, I, I was able to defeat a block off the edge. I just happened to see people up under my feet, at the corner of my eye, not really looking at it, but peripherally I can see somebody on my, you know, at my feet. So I just jumped. I jumped in there, um, parallel to the ground, and swatted the ball out of Ben's hand. I was able to also recover that fumble. And that caused us to win the football game. So that 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 play stands out to me. And also because that week before, um, you know, I was I gave up a couple of uh, big plays against Dallas, 
gave up a, T, a touchdown to T.O. and also gave up a uh, a big pass play to uh, to Witten. And so, you know, it's coming down hard on me as far as, you know, this is it, my time, my time is done, and all those things. And for me to be blessed to go out and make that play in crunch time like that the next week, and I was all, also had a couple more plays that game. You know, it was a it was a tremendous uh, tremendous blessing. Well, my faith in uh, my faith in the Lord has shaped me in every form and fashion. Uh, my decision making, being patient, the way I handle adverse situations, all those things have been shaped by my relationship and my growing relationship with the Father. Are there any people that have really meant a lot to you and kind of in, influenced you and impacted you and helped you grow in your in your career? Um, there are so many different people. That's one thing about, you know, when you have a developing a relationship with the Lord and continue to continue to grow in it, you recognize and realize that there are people that the Lord put in your life for different times and different seasons for growth. And you know, some of those people you continue to grow on and they continue to be a part of your life. And then others, they were just there for that season. But well, He's blessed me to be able to have some people in my life. Um, you know, Troy Vincent is one of them. Um, that was there when I was a young, young, uh, young, young in my walk, and still there to this day. You know, that's my my big brother. And you know, I've had you know, um, Urban Fryer um, in my life when I got to Philadelphia. It was um, Mark Woodard was there, another another strong uh, man in my life when I got to the pros. Um, and then just along the way. You meet different people, and um, that influenced you. And Reggie White was a huge one. Never really got a chance to know Reggie. I met him a couple of times and got a chance to laugh with him and trip out with him, but I never got a chance to know him. But his his walk was profound in mine because one of the things that I had heard about being a Christian as I was young in my faith is that, you know, you have to be passive and, you know, you have to continue to turn cheeks and all that stuff. But well, that's not what I saw when I saw Reggie White play. I saw a man of God that went out and dominated the field of play. And when everybody, when given the opportunity, he didn't force um, that, you know, his, his, what he believed on people. But when given the opportunity, he professed the name of Jesus Christ and was not ashamed of it. And that had a profound effect on, effect on me to let, to let me know that I still can be who I am as far as a player on the football field, tenacious, uh, enthusiastic and all those things, but you know that does not change the fact that I'm a man of God. And as I got older, obviously, you know I'm older, and the younger guys coming after me. There's been many a guy that we've had conversations off the field, um, you know, about faith, about living your life, about um, being a man, being a, a man of God, and not the, not the man in the, in the worldly sense of you can't show emotion, you can't tell you know another man you love him without any funny feelings. You know, I'm talking about being a man of God. And, you know, I've had many, many conversations with many, many, young, many, many young men along the way. Um, you know, if I start mentioning names, I mean, I will be here all day. But, um, <laughs> you know, we've, I've had so many different conversations about my faith or the way that, why I walk the way that I walk. And it was not a... Um, it's not a cookie, a, a sugar coat type of thing either. You know, for those individuals that I felt open to, to share my, my testimony with, and, you know, we, we got down to the nitty-gritty of some of, our, some of our conversations with those guys. And I let them know that, listen, with the product that you see in front of you is still a work in progress. I'm much better than I used to be. I'm not yet where I'm going to be, but I'm still walking this walk. So it's not that, you know, this is something that um, you can't have a peace of mind to achieve. Um, what the Word of God says. Yes, you can have it, but you've got to continue to, to build that relationship. Um, there's any, any current players that really excite you, that you really, really enjoy watching and seeing what they can do? Um, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Rebus, Darrell. I know he's mm-hmm. had that, um, you know, um, injury and he'll be out for the season, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his and the way he, can, the way he conducts himself and you know, the way that he uh, controls the field, shuts down one half of the field. And that's not a that's not a trait that every man can do. So I'm a, a huge fan of watching him. 
on game day on the defensive side of the ball. On the offense, man, I, I love to watch uh, um, uh, Fitz, Larry Fitzgerald. Not the, not the most outspoken of dudes, you know, not a whole lot of rah-rah, but when it comes down to making the big play at the big time and, you know, making every catch that comes his way, you can count on him every time. 